The setting is brand new, but the prize remains the same. An affirmation of gridiron greatness by earning the title Champion of the Southeastern Conference. In a storied rivalry that dates all the way back to 1892, here comes something unique, a rematch for the ages. Just a few weeks ago for Georgia, it seemed their wildest dream was coming true. To the four and into the end zone, touchdown! An undefeated season was on their mind. And then, the Deep South's oldest rivalry kicked off. And for the Bulldogs, <laughs> that dream turned into a nightmare. Touchdown, Auburn! Turn the lights out in Athens, Georgia! The Tigers' improbable mid-season renaissance has been fueled by their indomitable spirit and iron will. Carry on, there's the jump pass, touchdown! But this year, in this, the most demanding of conferences, it turns out beating your most ancient of rivals once is not enough. For Georgia and Auburn, <laughs> it's bragging rights be damned. Take two is for the championship of the SEC. And so it brings us to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's the SEC championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers for the 122nd time. The Deep South's oldest rivalry, and we've got a rematch for the ages here in Atlanta today. Take a look at the college football playoff rankings. Clemson and Miami has a date later tonight. So does Wisconsin and Ohio State. Oklahoma's taking care of their business right now, and that brings us to Auburn and Georgia here for the SEC title. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. Garrett starts back in the spring. It works its way through summer, and there's 14 teams in this league that have the dream of making it to the first Saturday in December here in Atlanta. And in this case, it's not only for the conference championship, it's for a spot in that final four. And it's a rematch. How about that? Hmm. How cool is that? You know, Brad, for the first 11 weeks of this season, I think the story of college football was... Georgia. I think it was. And then for the last three weeks, the story has been... Auburn. Yeah, how good are they? Are they that good at home? Or can they that good playing away from home? We will find out. And how good are they with their top tailback? Kind of a question mark. Carryon Johnson's been the biggest story this week, I think, with the exception of the coaching carousel. Right? I think you're right. But, you know, for Carryon Johnson to be Carryon Johnson, he plays physical. He doesn't use his legs. He uses that straight arm. When you come up to make a tackle, he makes you pay. If he's not able to use that arm, even like he did against Alabama last week, how good will this offense be without that running attack? That's the big story all week. Well, and the big story and the big question mark, and we'll take you back and show you why he's a question mark health-wise. Yeah, it happened, we think, maybe right here when Ronnie Harrison put that helmet on that arm, that left arm, but then later, Carrion Johnson felt a twinge and kind of shut it down. And then all week it was, how good is Carrion? And of course, no one's going to tell you how good he is, but I'm going to speculate this. As you watch him go off there last game, if that arm isn't falling off, he's going to play. He had 167 yards on the ground and a screen pass touchdown against Georgia the first time around. Let's take ourselves back now for Georgia three weeks ago. Top rushing team in the conference. Couldn't do anything against the Auburn defense. Everybody on the Georgia team has to play better. And if they do, their two stars will Will show up. They were shut down, but they can't block and run at the same time. For the offense to work, that offense has to be more varied, I agree, but they're not going to not use those guys. They have to be the stars. And here come the 11 and 1 Bulldogs of Georgia. about 70 miles from here. 
and making their first SEC title game appearance since 2012. Allie LaForce is with Kirby Smart. Coach, you said earlier this week, you don't shake a memory. How has the memory of the loss to Auburn gotten this team ready for this big moment? Well, it's helped keep our team focused and grounded. They realize and respect their opponent, but they want another opportunity, and that's what they've got today. Auburn did something that no other team was able to do this season when they shut down Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. How do you put them in a better position to succeed today? Try to get them some more open runs, loosen the defense up some. Got to get the ball in the perimeter a little bit and put a little more pressure on the quarterback. But both those guys will come out and give us all they got. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. You saw Auburn take the field at 10-2. and two. 7-1 and one in conference play, and they're making their first trip to this SEC title game since 2013. And Allie's with Gus Malzahn right now. Coach, you told us all week that Carrion Johnson would be a game-time decision. After watching him warm up, what was the decision? Yeah, he's going to play. He's going to start the game. He's feeling good, and we'll see how it goes. And how much more pressure does that put on Jared if Carrion is limited? How does that change the equation for him? Yeah, we got a lot of confidence in those other guys. they got a lot of practice. they got a lot of game reps, and I think we'll be ready. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. There's the news we wanted. Number 21 will be in the starting lineup. Georgia won the toss and deferred. <laughs> So Rodrigo Blankenship will tee it up. Auburn will touch the football first here in the SEC title game. Oh, is there some electricity in this building? Igben Nagani and Martin are back deep for Auburn. And Blankenship, as he's done so many times, knocks it out of the back of the end zone, so the Tigers will take over at the 25-yard line. And with that, our Dr. Pepper starting lineups. And it brings us one of the hottest quarterbacks right now in the country. He has been on a roll. There's his numbers. Tops in the SEC, fourth in the nation in completion percentage. Not only with some sensational throws, but he's been doing it with his legs in the last couple of weeks as well, which has added another dimension to the Auburn offense. Jarrett Stidham, this time a year ago, he was a scout team quarterback for a high school team in Waco, <laughs> Texas. A little bit different, Gary. Yeah, you know what he's earned? He's earned the coaches respect and confidence that they can call any play anywhere on the field. Carry on Johnson with him in the Auburn backfield and now he'll come under center and it's an end around to Eli Stove and Stove got about four before he's run down. David Marshall made the stop for Georgia. Here's the rest of the starting group for the Auburn Tigers. Casey done another great story. Jacksonville State a year ago a grad transfer his brother and sister both are at Auburn as well and he was the SEC lineman of the week three weeks ago against Georgia. Auburn actually substituted there, and the officials really didn't allow Georgia to substitute and get lined up. I think they properly slowed it down to not give Auburn advantage on that snap. Chandler Cox in the backfield as well. Actually, an H back on the right. Slayton in motion, play fake, and a throwback screen, and Georgia's all over that. DeAndre Baker with the open field tackle. Well, how different because Auburn really hurt Georgia in the first game with screens, slow screens, every type of perimeter throw, and they're chasing it down now. Too much zone last time. That time, Georgia said, we're playing man-to-man, -man and we're challenging these receivers. Opening third down, third and nine. Auburn 46% of their third down conversions on the year. Now, can Georgia find a pass rush like Auburn hurt Georgia in game one? They're going to bring an extra guy or two instead of got rid of it. Incomplete intended for Slayton, and it was Baker in coverage. Yeah, flags down, though. I think he grabbed him with his right hand. Pass interference. Number 18, defense. Kelly includes an automatic first down. Right to the outside, it was DeAndre Baker, number 18. One-on-one -on -one to the outside with Slayton. A little bit of a contact, and ironically... He would have had to do that. Yeah, ironically also, remember it was Kirby Smart who was complaining about the holding from the Auburn defenders in game one. So Baker made one good play and then accounted for that penalty. That gives Auburn a first down 
at the 37 yard line. You can see Georgia will substitute every time Auburn does to slow the pace down. Big shift there as Stidham goes back into the shotgun. Carry on Johnson off the left side almost broke into the secondary got about seven bring up second down and three as we take a look at Georgia defensively and their bell cow back there is Roquan Smith leading the team in tackles for a second straight year again and I don't mean to harp on it I guess I am though Auburn is substituting and that slows the pace down because Georgia matches it every time. Second down and three from the 44. Carry on Johnson's got the first down. Brad, you know, we're talking about wide receivers and running backs and quarterbacks. And what does Auburn do? They send out two offensive linemen as captains. Brandon Smith and, and uh, Austin Golson. Two seniors that have seen a lot of football. That's the guys to send out. Here's the first Wildcat of the day. Carry on Johnson's going to get off to Eli Stove. And Stove has got a first down. Auburn down to the 35 yard line. God, what a great changeup for Gus Malzahn. You know you're going to go Wildcat. George has been for three weeks thinking about this Wildcat and Carry on Johnson. So what do they do? Hand it off a beautiful call. And again, substitutions on both sides. Georgia gets their two last players to hustle off. And it's first down, Auburn. Started this drive at their own 25. They've gotten a first down by penalty. And again, Stove on the end around. Georgia had him wrapped up, but he broke out of there and got four yards. Carry on Johnson virtually every game this year has been a big game, but. Didn't play at Clemson with a hamstring problem and then really came to light in those games LSU A&M Georgia and last week against Alabama. And I think the rule is that the defensive team has the right to comfortably substitute. And comfortably is a little different for some of those 320 pounders exactly. than it is a linebacker. Second down and six. Play action. Stidham. Getting some pressure, throws on the run, and he got his man down around the 12-yard line, and it's Cox, the H-back, with a catch. Chandler Cox was running the wheel route. He was wide open for five seconds as Auburn starts to hurry up. I got to be careful to run when Auburn goes fast. I got to tell you that. Down to the 10-yard line. Stidham's going to go out to Slayton. He broke the tackle. Oh, oh boy, man. did he get hit by Roquan Smith. All right. Darius is going uh, I'd like to start going deep on these routes again. <laughs> wow. This is a guy we talked about on the Georgia defense and is the leader without a doubt not just a leading tackler but makes the calls and delivers the wood. They're in the Wildcat again with carry on Johnson on second and goal. Whoop, high snap fake the jump pass and now kind of head to the pylon. Not going to get there. Georgia drops him for a loss of one. Pretty creative. Why not try it, right? You tried the jump pass one time. Why not fake it and get outside? But Roquan Smith gets to the edge. Lorenzo Carter can run down those type of plays. And Georgia with a great defensive play. Maybe their best defensive play outside the two quick screens of this drive. Gary Ann Johnson, three carries, 11 yards. He lost one there. Third down and goal. Stid him back in at quarterback. Last time on third down, they blitzed. Will they do it again? Stidham play fake, end zone touchdown. Nate Craig Myers. Nate Craig Myers had the jump pass from Kerry on Johnson a week ago. Today, it's from his quarterback, six yards and a score. Well, Aaron. Davis number 35 has one on one coverage middle of your screen. He gets beat inside the only place he could not get beat. And when you've got a trigger man throwing that type of strikes like Stidham is right now. Those are easy. Daniel Carlson's 195th straight extra point is up and good. 
Auburn takes it the length of the field. 75 yards in 10 plays, a little over five minutes. They got help from one big penalty, but their quarterback, red hot, his 17th touchdown pass of the year, and the Tigers draw first blood at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. For the 11th time in 13 games, Auburn scores first, 7 other. Carlson to kick. This one will not be returned, and Georgia will come out to the 25-yard line as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting lineups for the Dogs, and it all starts with the freshman from Houston County High School and Warner Robins, local product, Jake Fromm. Jake closing in on 2,000 yards passing on the season. He's had some big moments for a guy as young as he is, obviously, and now playing in the SEC championship game. My advice to Jake Fromm is do not try to do too much. Be yourself. When the plays arise, give them the ball, but don't try to be something you're not in this game. As you saw, season low total yards and rushing yards three weeks ago against Auburn. Here's a toss sweep. Nick Chubb. Chubb got a big opening. Oh, one more guy, and he might have been really off to the races. Deshaun Davis tripped him up. Georgia, at the beginning of the season, was looking for somebody to emerge as a wide receiver. There's become the big play guy for Jake Fromm, Javon Wims, who leads the dogs in receptions, yardage, and touchdowns. So the timeout came with Georgia with a first and 10 at their own 38 yard line. Auburn's defense has given up only two first quarter touchdowns all year. One of them was to Georgia on the dogs opening drive three weeks ago at Jordan Hare. There's a toss sweep and Sony Michelle dropped the ball but it went out of bounds. Lucky for him. You know last time in the big game when Georgia was number one on the road we thought they were a little tight and yeah. maybe in you know all of the game. You know, these guys have played in so many big games now. I just can't really attribute that to it. Sonny Michelle just took his eye off it. As simple as that. So his eyes will be on the sideline, and DeAndre Swift, the freshman, will check into the Georgia backfield on second down and 10. Fromm's going to flip it out, and Swift never turned around. Would have hit him in stride had he turned around, I think. Well, you know, I think Swift saw Trey Williams coming out to the outside and avoiding the pick. And I think Swift said, I'm going to go deep. I think he thought he would cut, cut underneath it and it made an adjustment. And Jake Fromm had no chance on that one. Almost got him right in the back of the helmet. Yeah. You know, freshman to freshman could be David dangerous. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. In a game of this magnitude. Yes. So third down and 10. Georgia, the top third down team in the SEC, fifth in the country. But they've got to get all of this one. And here comes that rush from Auburn. Fromm hangs in, got it. Complete Nicole Hardman at a first down. Well, how about that throw? We talked about Jared Stidham putting that ball perfectly on target. Good protection this time. Nobody at his feet. A perfect throw to the outside. Nicole Hardman is 19th catch of the year. Big one for a first down into Auburn territory for the first time for the Bulldogs. And that's a good cover guy, Carlton Davis, on him. That was a great route by Miko Hardman. From under center with Sony Michelle behind him. Play action. Here comes the heat. Down he goes. Sacked by Trey Matthews, a former Bulldog. Boy, sometimes you shake your head. You watch this college football game, and as soon as a quarterback competes a, completes a pass and you can't get a pass rush, what does the other team do? Start bringing the heat. Every time you watch it, they say, we're not letting that guy back there just stand in there and gain his confidence early. We're going to let him know that we're going to be on his feet, his waist, his shoulders, and in front of his eyes all day. So that puts Georgia behind the sticks badly. Second down and 17. They're edging up there like they might bring some heat again. Sonny Michelle trying to cut it outside. Got a block on the edge. Got near midfield. Before he's run down there by Javaris Davis. As we check the Auburn defense for you. Jeff Holland. He was 
a major pain in Jake Fromm's backside the first time these two teams played. He had a sack. He had three quarterback pressures. I called his name more than I think anybody on the defense. If that happens again, it won't be good news for Georgia yeah, fans. That's for sure. And you look, you got the tight end right there willing to help. Watch him chip to help the tackle on the play. There's the chip. Fromm, and this time it comes from the other side. Dontavious Russell with a sack. So the Auburn defense, like they did three weeks ago, putting the heat on the Georgia quarterback. And that's the big problem with this Auburn defensive line. You cannot key on just one player. They've got four elite pass rushers up front, and if you help on one side, the pressure comes from the other side. All four of them had a sack the first time around. All four starting defensive linemen. So as Gary said, you block one too many times and it's coming from somewhere else. Nice to punt. This one should be returnable from the 13 yard line. And about a six or seven yard return by Stephen Roberts. Gives it back to the Auburn offense as they're trying to unpile everybody. Somebody lost a helmet. Roberts did in all of that. 6 16 remaining first quarter. That tough Tiger defense does its job again. Offense when we come back. So Auburn's got it back on offense at the 24 yard line with a touchdown lead. Stidham to throw on first down. Nope. Gonna run on first down. And he's got some room. He's got a first down. Oakland Smith tracked him down, but I think they're going to move the chains on this one. And that's the beauty of what Jared Stidham is bringing to the offense. Uh, we've talked about this so much that Auburn traditionally under Gus has had the running option. Oh, throw down the sideline and Stove has got another Auburn first down. What a great adjustment by Eli Stove and Jared Stidham. It was supposed to be a quick screen out here, but when it's blown up, the adjustment is made, and they get a big play out of it. What a heads-up play by both of those players. And uh, Johnson got a couple. That's something you cannot teach. I thought, a, was, I thought it was going to be picked off. Well, perfect elevation on the ball, just high enough over Lorenzo Carter, who goes about 6-5 on the play. But remember, that was supposed to be a wide receiver screen and two players adjusting on the fly. 7 nothing. at the end of one. We'll return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. Set to start the second quarter of the SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper. Auburn with a touchdown lead. And the ball just inside the 30. Second down and three. Cam Martin in the backfield gets another carry and a first down run. So he's come in for the last couple of plays with Kerryon Johnson having carried the last snap of the second, of the first quarter rather. And there was the little bit of added yep. touch. And it was on his right arm. That's where the rumors are that he's suffering that right shoulder problem. And he really was in a little pain as he went off. And, uh, you know, Cam Martin, you talk to Gus, no matter how many times you talk to him, he says Cam is a good football player, just doesn't have a lot of experience and doesn't have a lot of size to take carry the workload like carry on does. Or to be a pass blocker. All right, that's another problem. So far, Stidham's perfect. In the red zone at the 18. Martin took a shot from Roquan Smith, but he had a good gain on the play as we check in with Allie. Hey guys, I'm standing behind Carry on Johnson. He hasn't received any medical attention. It doesn't seem like any part of his body is bothering him. He's not grabbing his arm or his shoulder. Players are coming up to him though and trying to keep him fresh mentally. So he's good to go when he does enter the game again. All right, Al, thanks. All right, tackle is shifted out. One of those gimmick formations. That's offensive tackle right there. Golson, number 73. Stidham. Pumps, brings it back down, throws across his body and throws it out of bounds. Yeah, well defended by Georgia. They've seen all these tricks. They've adjusted to them and made no easy throws. The, you know, I actually think that Mel Tucker defensive coordinator Kirby Smart said, if they beat us, they're going to beat us down the field. I'm tired of looking at those wide receiver yeah. screens. They have taken that away. There's Mel in the red jacket. Georgia's red zone defense best in the conference. Let's see if they can get a stop on third down and six. That was the first incompletion thrown by Jared Stidham today. 
And he threw that one away on purpose. Ryan Davis in motion. Lorenzo Carter trying to put heat up the middle from the backside, and the ball is out. Still loose. Georgia might have this. Looked like Auburn was going to get on top of it, but I'm not sure now. Neither of the officials. It's Georgia ball. Davin Bellamy's the guy that caused the fumble. And that saved three points. Remember in game one, Georgia got a fumble to save three points as well, but this time it was forced instead of it. Bellamy comes right around the corner this time, and he beats a good football player in Austin Golson. Gets around it and retreats back inside. Boy, that clock, that mental clock, when you're in that position right there, that's how Jarrett Stidham started this season against Clemson, holding on to it a little too long, and a play that for sure is a sure three points ends up in a zero. Great stop by Georgia. Second force fumble by number 17, Davin Bellamy gives it back to the Georgia offense. And Nick Chubb. And Nick Chubb still going. That's his best run of the day, a pickup of about 17. And the best part was he ran through tackles. How many did he run through? Three of them at least. Had to fight like crazy to get back near the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. man, Jeff Holland in that play, Brad. He just took tight end Blazevich and put him into the backfield. This is a tough matchup. Watch Holland and watch what he does to the tight end. Bang, bang, bang. Oof. Blew up the play. We said if we call Holland's name a lot, it's not good for Georgia. It wasn't on that play. Sony Michelle in the backfield now. From on second down, wants to throw, fires. Terry Godwin made a catch, but he is lassoed by Carlton Davis. Second and long, play it in front of you. Just make sure you make the tackle. Auburn believes their secondary is successful because they tackle the catch. You saw a great example of that right there. Carlton Davis, a three-year starter over on that corner spot for Auburn, forces a third down and eight. From waits, fires late, got his man. Second time he's got one to Nicole Hardman for a first down. You know, I, I made a note on my board here, believe me or not. I, I think Jeff Brom is a good thrower to the outsides of formation. I saw it against Notre Dame. You've seen it through the year. He throws the out route really well. Threw it going the other way in the first quarter and now to Hardman for the second time and a first down for the Dogs at their own 47-yard line. Play action, quick slant, and it's Miko Hardman again. And Georgia's got something working. Boy, here's an RPO. You want to play defense? You have to deal with this. Watch this. Play action pass up to the quarterback. It's his decision on the play, and he made the right decision on that one. 34-yard pickup down the middle. And now it's Sonny Michelle. Battles his way for about three. Remember, nine people are running a run play. The offensive line doesn't even know it's a pass. And Miko Hartman slides right into the open area. Georgia and Jake Fromm has got it working. Two of those three completions to Miko Hartman. Play action here. Fires. End zone. Just over the outstretched arms and a flag flies in. Wims was the intended receiver. Well, remember what Kirby was complaining about. He felt his receivers got Captain held. Number six, defense. Penalty includes an automatic first down. Kirby, remember, he was a defensive backfield coach. It's right down here. Holding, holding, holding. He felt in game one, and he gets the call right there. It was a good call. He had a whole handful of jersey, not to mention the hand fighting that was going on before that. And even with that, you think Kirby's, Rims almost got a hand up. Think Kirby smiling on the sideline. I think you should send you a thank you note. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we love the referees. Steve Shaw's up here in the booth. Okay, they got great integrity, but you know, you got to. That's part of the game to play the refs, right? Gamesmanship. Yes. 
Georgia's got it first and goal. Try to tie this game up. At the two yard line. Sony Michelle, the tailback in the eye. They fake the toss from end zone. Wide open, not a touchdown. Jim Chaney's version of the jump pass. You do it a little differently. Here's the tight end right here. Now watch the strong toss. That's the jump part of it right here. Okay, here's the jump, and then here's the pass. Just do a little different angle, but the same result. Two weeks ago, I said to Jim Chaney, how come you don't use a tight end more often? He said, don't try to be an offensive coordinator. Yes. Well. Blank and ship. Points good. You were right. At least for Isaac Nada, his second touchdown catch all year. Remember, Georgia stopped Auburn on a fumble recovery, and then they took it 84 yards in seven plays. Jake Fromm, nearly flawless. The touchdown to Nada were even in Atlanta. So an 84-yard drive after the fumble recovery. The touchdown pass tied at seven. Blankenship's kick will not be returned. Auburn's Tigers will bring it out to the 25. Auburn from the 25. Quick throw out in the flats to Ryan Davis. Georgia, nice job to hold him to about a three-yard game. Second and seven. And carry on Johnson, his first carry since it looked like he was shaken up and he didn't have much on that one. DeAndre Walker was part of the reason. Yeah, those delayed runs. Remember we talked about how he's patient with the ball? Well, patient works unless the deep offensive line doesn't block. When the offensive line has a big whiff, you're going to get a big negative play when you're standing behind the line of scrimmage. And then you're facing third down and 11. Boy, that's the second big miss by Austin Golson, number 73, left tackle in this game. He's played every position on that line except right guard over the course of the year. Can Georgia get pressure again? Stidham, they're getting some on him right now, and he's got to get it rid of it and throw it out to the sideline. And Punting I'll tell time you, for Auburn. And I'll tell you, they're just not relying on three or four players. They've decided Stidham's too good to sit back. They're coming after him, okay? Whether they have to rush three, four, five, or six, this time it's five. You get the extra rusher because he's actually covering the back. It's a delayed rush. So you actually get five plus one when the block when the back blocks. Aiden Marshall the punt. Nicole Hardman waits on the other end. Nice kick. He's going to have to clear everybody out of the way and just let it bounce in front of him. Doesn't yeah, but, really bounce anyplace. Yeah, but that's a big win for Auburn. The way they cover punts and kickoffs. Right. <laughs> if it lands on the turf and stops, we'll take it if you're Auburn. 7-7 seven, seven game in Atlanta. Georgia from the 32. Sully Michelle got a block on the corner. Got the edge. And Sonny Michelle goes for about 20. Well, Charlie Werner that time, number 89, the tight end. If you're going to one wide, Werner goes in motion and gets the end man on the scr scrimmage. Comes across and hooks it right there. What a great job to the outside. Got it to midfield, and Fromm comes up throw and complete out to Godwin, who got about five more. Charlie Werner, the guy on that block, his uncle was an All-American, Scott Warner, defensive back for the Dogs back in the Vince Dooley heydays of the 80s. Georgia back in Auburn territory at the 46. Pretty good day for Jake, huh? Seven out of eight, 76 and a touchdown. Yeah, he's gaining confidence, and you know what? The offensive line has given him confidence with good pass protection. Here comes a blitz off the corner, just flips it out to Sonny Michelle. Oh, what a move! Sonny Michelle down the sideline. Michelle inside the 20. Boy, did he plant his foot on that one. Well, that time Trey Williams, number 30, who had a man to man, got there too slow, too much space, and Williams misses the tackle. And when Sonny Michelle gets a crease, 
he can burn you. He burned him for 32 yards to the 14. Nick Chubb back in the Georgia backfield. Fromm's going to flip it out to Nick Chubb this time. And Nick trying to head to the end zone has got it first and goal around the four. Riley Ridley got a block to the outside that time. First it's a tight end, now a wide receiver to the outside, giving them opportunities to create space. A completely different Georgia attack from game one. They're keeping it wide open and quick throws. First and goal at the three. Nick Chubb trying to weave his way to the goal line. He got close, but not in. Keep it wide, throw it quick, and then hammer. Davidson, who just got back in there with a wrapped up elbow, made the tackle. But it's second and goal inside the one. And now they're going to lose yardage on this one. Good that, job by Auburn's defense. Yeah, at that time, Auburn's defense went all out gamble. They were playing run all the way on that play. They guessed if it would have been a play action pass, it would have been an easy walk in to Sean Davis was hitting the line of scrimmage, you know, a half second before the snap and hit at full speed. They couldn't block him. So now it's third and goal. Last Great. time they were in this spot, Jake Fromm threw to his tight end for a touchdown. They got a couple of them out there in Blazevich and Nauta. Yeah, and this is the spot on the field in this situation where Fromm is a threat to keep the ball. Third and goal. That's Nauta in motion. From rolls, throws, got his man, Godwin, touchdown. That's got to be a pick. you got to do it better than that, Georgia. That's too obvious. That has to be a pick. Is there a flag on the play? I don't see one. I don't see one. Oh, I do now. I do now. It's the Clemson play going the other direction. Remember against Matt, Alabama? Offense on the outside receiver blocking down during a forward pass. 15 yard penalty. Down. Yeah, I remember the national championship game? Right. Alabama fans could well watch. The outside recruiter comes in, gets the pick on the play. I think it was Wims way out, and then Goodwin. Godwin ends up being free. Actually, you know, it was the defender and everybody just slamming together. A bump and run. He's trying to get in the way, but that's just not going to be allowed. So that negates a two yard touchdown pass. And with a penalty, it backs it all the way up around the 18-yard line. You think you're going to, Steve Shaw, the head of the officials in our booth, you think you're going to get that one sent to the office, Mr. Shaw? He's smiling here. Third and goal at the 17. Sonny Michelle straight up the middle. Georgia plays it safe to play for the field goal and not try to get all of it here. We go back one more time and look at the play from up here. First look was that Wims just blocked the player. But at second look, you watch it again, and there was a lot of contact on the play. So Blankenship in to attempt the field goal. Boy, that's a different little look at it right there, isn't it, from the pylon cam, or was it one of our handhelds? Whatever it is, that was a different look at it. Blankenship, 13 out of 15 on the year. A 27-yard field goal is good. Let's go down to Alley. Coach, the penalties cost you a touchdown, cost your defense an interception. Why so many self imposed mistakes? Well, we're being aggressive. Those aren't undisciplined penalties, they're aggressive penalties. We've got to do a better job executing and do what we coach to do. In a game that's so evenly matched, what will set you apart in the second half? Well, I think, again, it comes down to keeping your composure and playing with physicality. That's what we're trying to do. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Sure, that's what he's going to tell him uh, right now in the locker room. What a great answer right there. We'll take aggressive penalties, not dumb ones. End of the first half with a score, Georgia 10, Auburn 7. We'll be back with a Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. Well, maybe we'll have some new legends two quarters from now. 10-7. Georgia will get the football to start the third quarter. Different feel, isn't it? 
Well, it was 16 to 7 at halftime. Auburn three weeks ago. Yeah. What's the difference? Big difference here feeling this football game. You know, the defensive line and offensive line for Georgia that got dominated, they're dominating. Kick will go to Hardman, and he'll take a knee. So Georgia will bring it out to the 25, and we'll send it down moments ago. This was Allie with Gus Malzahn. Coach, what's your plan for carry on in the second half after he wasn't as effective in the first half? Yeah, you know, we're going to play him, uh, and we're going to play all of them. You know, he's just not 100%, but that's okay. Uh, we got to protect the football. You know, that was a tough turnover down there. Playing really good, and we got to get the momentum back in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. So Georgia with a lead here at the break. That wasn't the story three weeks ago at Jordan Hare when they trailed by nine. Here's a flea flicker that didn't work the first game. It's not going to work here either. So they tried that three weeks ago and they didn't get it blocked and they didn't get it blocked again. And actually it was the same player, Deshaun Davis, who stopped both plays. Last time it was Davis number 57, and it's Davis again number 57. But in all fairness, Auburn's defensive backs had the play covered. So we probably won't see that again. <laughs> so the fake jump pass didn't work, and now the <laughs> flea flicker didn't work. Both sides have burned one of their trick plays. Second down and 10. Fromm gets DeAndre Swift set where he wants him. Might throw to him and does. Swift can't get away from Davis. Nice open field tackle. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, in the first half, we saw Trey Williams go into the locker room. I have now been told by Auburn he's out for the game with the right shoulder injury. Also, Carlton Davis is out for the game for undisclosed reasons. If I learn more, I'll let you know. Wow, that's, that's big starting that's corner. That's huge. That is huge. That means... Javaris Davis will be one of the corners, and then Jamel Dean on the other corner. Let's see if they try to go that way on third down and four. Godwin in motion. From fires complete. I don't know if it's a first down to Godwin, though. Ooh, it's going to be really close. I think it's going to be just short. And I thought... You know, remember Robert Foster last week for Alabama? Yep. Remember, they can't see that yellow line like we can. If Foster would have dove forward, he might have made it. And on this play, the same thing. A little dive to his left could have been a first down. And, uh, you know, you react the way you do. It's live out there. And that time, they didn't quite get to the sticks. And Georgia. Oh, you got to punt. Or try to draw him off sides. You can't afford to give Auburn the ball at the 50-yard line. So here comes Nizalek. As we said earlier, Nizalek's only given up nine punt, uh, ten punt returns now after the first half. And Stephen Roberts trotting back around his own ten yard line. Nizalek hit this one a mile in the air. Roberts has to clear out. Georgia can't get to it. Touchback. It was a beautiful punt, but a good bounce for Auburn. So Georgia had their chance on offense to open the third. Auburn is on deck. Back in Atlanta at the SEC Championship on CBS. Presented by Dr. Pepper. Georgia with a field goal lead as we took a look at the game trends. Carryon Johnson has not been the carryon Johnson we've seen all year. Jarrett Stidham very sharp in the first half for Auburn. And likewise, Jake Fromm, 11-13. Been sacked a couple times, but has a touchdown pass as well. Four wideouts, two stacked to each side for Stidham. Rokon Smith blitzes up the middle. Stidham throws late and got it complete, and there's Ryan Davis. And this time, Georgia doesn't get him down. That might be the play of the day so far for Jerry. He rides up in the pocket, feels it. Sees the red, the white jerseys coming at him and makes the big first down throw. Maybe his best play of the day. And when they get a play like that, they go in a hurry. And here they are in a toss to carry on Johnson. And he got to the edge. Roquan Smith will run him unceremoniously out of bounds. And the Auburn sideline looking for a flag doesn't get one. 
Well, they finally found some space for Carrion Johnson to get to the outside and run. But watch, again, no straight arm. He's kind of running, protecting himself as he runs. Got to give him a lot of credit. It's such a big game, he has to play, but you can tell he's not the carry-on we saw in this run when basically Auburn was in the playoffs five games ago. They had to win every game. Right. Well, they've worked it to the 32-yard line. Started at their own 20. Carry on Johnson said, hurry up. Play clock at four. They get the snap. Delayed blitz by the dogs. Stidham throws. Wide open Davis. Another Auburn first down inside the 20. I'll tell you what, when the running game just gives Auburn anything, Jared Stidham accuracy on these passes is just amazing to watch. I mean, I, you know, I've been watching college football for 25, 30 years, and when you get a hot quarterback like that, marry it with just a little running game, you got a potential big time offense. From the 19, jump cut by Johnson. Drags tacklers down to the 15. Uh, you were wrong on that, Brad. There was two jump cuts on that one. You only called one. I, I missed one. Yeah, you missed one. <laughs> it was kind of a hop, skip, and run. Watch. Jump. Jump. Yep, you're right. There was two in there. Yeah, well, you'll be, your pay will be docked just a little bit. Got it at the 15-yard line. Their opening possession of the third quarter is taking them 65 yards in two and a half minutes. And they're... In the red zone. Play action. Stidham backpedals, throws to the corner of the end zone, threw it away. Incomplete. Well, that time, Georgia's secondary never came out of the deep safety. You keep a defender deep, and you have nowhere to go down the middle. Watch Slayton go down the seam here. He thinks he's open, but the quarterback's got nowhere to go. You have to throw it away. A good defensive call that time by Georgia and Mel Tucker. So third down and six. Where's that guy? Through that the window <laughs> and yeah. in to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's pretty cute. Now, will they blitz on this one? Last time they played it safe. Last down on second down. Doesn't look like a blitz, does it? Nope. nope. A late one comes from Roquan Smith, and it's going to pay off because Trenton Thompson just got enough of an ankle on Stidham to bring him down. Yeah, but this time no turnover, at least for Auburn. Good job by this Georgia defense stemming this drive. So much success, but late. Oh, wow, good block that time to clean it up by Braden Smith, number 71, or there would have been a big hit, and this would have been a longer field goal. As it is, the all-time leading score in SEC history. Set for a 31-yard field goal attempt. His holder's been there for every one of those points. Snaps a little high, and the kick was blocked. And Dominic Sanders has got it for Georgia. And this was just a mush rush up the inside. A huge play by the Georgia special teams. Oh, by the way, everyone has reacted. It looked like it was just a push. Too much of a push inside over the middle. And then, late. yes, that was just too much of a rush inside. He got the block. Hawkins Muckle is the guy that got it. And a 31-yard field goal that you thought was a chip shot for that guy is blocked by Georgia. You know, that's six points. Remember, in the, for game one, Georgia left points on the field. Now Auburn has left six points on the field. From quick play fake. And the throw complete out to Godwin, and Terry Godwin's got it at midfield and into Auburn territory. Could you do me a favor and confirm that I wrote on my board, throws well to the sideline? I saw it. <laughs> he really does. I don't know why. He's comfortable throwing. He sees the opening. I don't know if he looks in front of him and he doesn't see a lot of jerseys and he just feels better, but he's as good as there is. I've seen in a long time of throwing the ball to the outside. A great skill to have. A pickup of 31 to Godwin at the Auburn 49-yard line. They fake the end around. 
Fromm's going to throw it short out to Miko Hardman. Well, great decisions by the quarterback, Jake Fromm, as we look at, uh, I guess, the only scenarios we got left, right? I think three spots are gone. I mean, Oklahoma wins. We're down to one more scenario. And if Wisconsin in, wins, Alabama's out. The Big Ten's going to take that other spot. But scenario two, oh my goodness. <laughs> like I said before, I might even watch this show if yep. this happens because that committee <laughs> is between a rock and a hard place, especially with those two teams. Second and four, Nick Chubb ran into his own guy, bounced off, and Nick Chubb on his way down inside the 25. Might have been the best thing he could have done is run into his own blocker. He pinballed off of that and picked up 20 yards. When Kevin Steele talked to us about his biggest fear is he said that when these backs get a sliver, they can make what is supposed to be an eight-yard play into a 20-yard play. Which and is, you saw it right there. Which is exactly what it was, a 20-yard pickup down to the 24 of Auburn. Sony Michelle out for the moment. Allie reports to us from the sideline. You saw him going the 10 earlier. And DeAndre Swift ain't a bad replacement as the number three back. The freshman's in there, and he's got it in hand. But he's only going to get about a yard out of this. Well, we talked about it. I don't know if the committee is thinking we are the biggest Wisconsin fans of all time because <laughs> remember last year they vaulted Ohio State over the Big Ten champions. They're looking at Alabama, who I think clearly had from game one to the end of the season the most consistent season. They got one less loss. Do you leave out the Big Ten? Do you give two to the SEC? What a decision. Georgia and Auburn are trying to decide things on the field right here in Atlanta. And a quick slant's broken up. Intended for Wims. It's going to be third down and eight. Wims coming inside. Man to man coverage. Get no easy throws. And at the end of the play, Deshaun Davis is very lucky. He missed with that uh, launch with his helmet right there. If that would have gone head to head, he might have been out of the game. Wims doesn't have a catch today. That one was too far out in front of him. He's been their big play guy. They like to go 50-50 ball to the outside on these. Empty backfield. Going to flip it out to DeAndre Swift. Can he get any blockers? Not enough. Maybe to the 18. Really surprised. Without Carlton Davis in the game, their great man-to-man -man quarterback corner, why hasn't Georgia tried to throw the 50-50 ball to Wims? He's so good at it. Remember he started the game off last time against uh, Auburn, and that was the first drive when they scored. Rodrigo Blankenship hit from 27 earlier. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt to try to stretch Georgia's lead to six. Looking for his 15th field goal of the year. Up and good. Georgia tacks on three more. So the dogs have a six point advantage. We've got 126 left third quarter. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Allie the Force, and our CBS crew, Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta. SEC championship on the line. We've got 16 minutes and 26 seconds of game time remaining. The story of the game so far to me is both quarterbacks are playing well, but the defenses are playing better. Yep. Blankenship who just hit the field goal. This one's going to be returnable, I think. They've been knocking on the right sideline. Oh, man. Collision over there about the 22. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, Sony Michelle is out indefinitely. He came out of the tent. They put a brace on the left knee, but he went out to the sideline. He didn't like it. Came back. They took it off. They also took off the compression sleeve. He is out for now. Kirby came up to him and said, how are you doing? He shrugged his shoulders. He's very uncomfortable with that left knee. Mm. You get to this point of the season and everybody's banged up. We talked about carry on Johnson obviously throughout the game. He's back in there right now, but he's not 100%. Sonny Michelle's not 
Yeah, but 100% uh, Sonny Michelle is easier to take than a non-100% uh, carry on Johnson, exactly. right? Exactly, yep. If there was a Cam Petway in there, it might be it even. Might be but different. On first down, quick pass on the screen to Davis. A uh, great hustle from inside that time by David Marshall. Defensive tackle David Marshall sees the quick screen and then from the backside he turns and runs and lays out to make that play. How's that for hustle? Brian Davis who became the single season reception leader in Auburn history had 11 catches last week against Alabama. Total yardage cut in half pretty much but we still got a quarter to go. Did him going deep. Slayton's out there and he overshot him. Pretty good coverage by DeAndre Baker. That's a great matchup today. It's been a great battle. Confident on the field and in the classroom today. Scholar athletes presented by Quicken Loans. Rodrigo Blankenship, who's got a couple of field goals today. Casey Dunn, who was the SEC player of the week against Georgia three weeks ago. Quicken Loans commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Georgia and Auburn's general scholarship fund. Here's a sugar puddle on third down and a long yard. They break it in a hurry. Stidham under center. And the gives to carry on Johnson for the first down. And that might bring us to the close of the third quarter as he got it out to the 35 yard line. Well they say big decisions are easy when you have no other options. <laughs> now you got to decide do we still have the carry on Johnson option or do we have to decide to do something else. I think we're going to have a few minutes to think about it. As Auburn. Standing pat. And yeah, no use making a mistake here. They look a little disorganized. I'd be shocked if they snap this. Looks like they're going to try to. I guess they will. Last play of the quarter. Stidham's going to run with it. And he's got another first down run. Took a big hit at the end of it. A big play. Boy, his legs. You know, I have to admit, Gus Malzahn told us yesterday we were talking to Coach Malzahn. Don't undersell Jarrett's athletic ability. He can make plays, and I'm going, well, you're not going to call any runs for him, are you? Oh, yeah, it's all on the line. We played three quarters in Atlanta. Six rank Georgia leads number two Auburn 13 to seven. Who's going to win the SEC title? We got 15 more minutes to figure it out. We'll return to Atlanta right after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter for the SEC championship in Atlanta. Georgia leads 13 to 7. Auburn with the football at its own 47 yard line with a first down. The give is to carry on Johnson. And the ball is out. Yep. And Roquan Smith has got it for Georgia. Another costly turnover, much like the strip sack earlier of Stidham. And the dogs have got the ball back. So Auburn scores on their first possession of the game. Seven possession cents, no points. Let's see who got it. Maybe Lorenzo Carter. Yep. Yes, he did. Marion Johnson can't really say it's we don't know which shoulder it is. We haven't been told a lot. Did not control that ball and protect it. You could see the ball swinging just as Carter's hand came out. So Bellamy and Carter, the two bookheads who came back to Georgia for one more year and produced two turnovers in this game. They call themselves the Wolf Pack. The Dog Pack in this case has got the ball back at the 39 of Auburn. Carry on Johnson beside himself on that Auburn sideline. First down, and it's Fromm on the keeper. Broke one tackle, Jake Fromm, all the way to the 22 yard line. Well, Javon Wims, number six, hasn't caught a lot of passes, but he caught a big block to the outside. Left part of your screen, watch that block to the left side. That's what allowed an extra 8-10 yards for Jeff Fromm. Jake Fromm 
17 yards to the 22. You know, so far that defensive line, this last five-game winning streak for Auburn has been so dominating. Kevin Steele has not been forced to blitz, but now you wonder if they have to do it. It's a toss on the end around to Hardman. And he gets tagged out at the 18-yard line and a flag. Looked like it might have been a little late, and I think the officials are going to agree. That one little bit. It's tough when you get somebody on the sideline. Personal foul. They hit about out of bounds on the defense. Fairly from half the distance to the goal line from the end of the run with an automatic first down. Steven Roberts, number 14, is the guy who got it. Let's see at the end of the play. He's getting pushed by Nada, number 18, at the same time when he throws him down. It's, again, one of those calls. Remember down at the goal line when we had the pick play? Right. Sometimes the officials see things and it flashes really quickly. I think the combination of Nada's block and him having his hand out appeared that it was a late hit. One tough call for Georgia, one tough call for Auburn. Just outside the Auburn eight-yard line, Georgia's got it first and goal. DeAndre Swift is behind Jake Fromm, and he gets the call. A tough two yards for Swift on the inside. Coming to the outside, Roberts gets a hold of him, but watch Fromm come, I, I mean, Nada come in and give him a little shove. Was it later than that when he gets up? Was it the end of the play? That just looked like a nothing play to me in this big of a game to call that. That one. That's the least favorite call I've seen of the game. Chubb back in there for Georgia. As the deep back behind from on second and goal at the six. And he's going to throw from back shoulder. Got it. Godwin. Touchdown. Flag down. Offside. Lined up in the neutral zone, number 91 of the defense. The penalty's decline. He's over the play as a touchdown. Well, I called for the 50-50 throw to the outside. The fade on the other end of the field. We're going to get it down at the bottom right here. See it. Throw it to the outside, back shoulder, he's got it. And I'll tell you, Brad, in this building, that's a tough catch because at that angle, the lights are brutal in this building. So the fumble by Carrion Johnson becomes a touchdown, and Georgia goes for two. Charlie Werner, the up back in the eye. Now they empty the whole backfield. Four receivers down here on the bottom for Fromm. He's going the other way with it, and he's got it to Godwin again for two. Back to back, fades to the outside. Remember, Carlton Davis, their best corner, is not in the game. It all started with Carrion Johnson, Lorenzo Carter forcing this fumble that was recovered by Roquan Smith. And then 39 yards and four plays later, the freshman Jake Fromm to Terry Godwin, who made a sensational catch in the Notre Dame game. He made one there. That was the touchdown going the other direction on the other side of the field, the two-point conversion. And the largest crowd ever to see a football game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium seeing a dandy. And it's 21 to 7, Georgia, with 13 and change remaining. Blankenship's kick will not be returned. And Auburn will start at the 25-yard line, and now they're a two-touchdown hole. And now it's up to Jared Stidham and company, and it's Cam Martin straight up the middle again. No carry on Johnson out there right now. You know, when you went through that recap, uh, Brad, I noticed that carry on tripped as he was going through the line, yeah. and that's why the ball kind of came off his body. And then for him, unluckily, he gets swatted in a turnover. For a guy that was the number one rusher as far as yards per carry per game, I should say. Not today, though. And not 100%, obviously. 
Chandler Cox, the fullback, comes in motion, sets up in the backfield. Quick throw is too far in front of Eli Stove. Well, it does. Remember when last game it looked like Georgia was frustrated. Now it looks like Auburn's getting frustrated. The last seven possessions of the game before this one, four punts, two fumbles, and one blocked field goal since their opening touchdown. That's seven possessions. This is the eighth since the opening drive. 40% on the third down conversions today. This one's big, third and six. Here they come again. They're going to get the linebackers coming right inside. Here they come up the middle. Roquan Smith is going to force Stidham up in the pocket, and he throws incomplete. Intended for Craig Myers. Yeah, there's no way Mel Tucker and Kirby Smart are going to change up now. That inside blitz has given Auburn problems. It's given Jared Stidham problems when he moves up into the pocket. You can see Kerryon Johnson does a good job with his block, but an inaccurate throw from Jared. They have no choice but to punt here. Georgia sort of got the safe on here on fourth down and six. Marshall's punt. Hardman tried to clear everybody out of the way. It's going to go out of bounds around the 39 yard line, I think. Nick Chubb, we talked about it. The previous possession, he just went from three to two and passed Darren McFadden. And now, Herschel's the only guy in front. That's sensational. Couldn't happen to a better guy, You're right? right? Small town Georgia, best friends with the big city guy, Sony Michelle, their roommates. And Georgia, after only 46 yards in the first meeting, grinding it out or trying to. Vernon, I did that game when he hurt that knee. It was like, you know. Watching them, I felt so bad, but to see him play like he has now, one of the great stories. Swift with Fromm in the backfield. He'll get the carry. DeAndre Swift, and he's fast, and he's maybe gone. DeAndre Swift, touchdown. Four yards for the freshman for the touchdown. And you know, Javon Wims makes another big block on this play. He's not caught a pass in the game, but he has contributed big time. And as we said, you lose carry on, not much else. Sony Michelle goes down, you got another guy. Extra point is good. You know, the second fastest guy on the field on that play? Kirby Smart. <laughs> he saw the play break out. Here's the block by Wims right here. That's what broke it. Wims blocks, but at the top of the screen, watch Kirby. He's out of the screen. Wims is, here comes Kirby. He's going to come back into picture. Hey, he was all SEC in 1998. Captain of the team. There he, there he goes. <laughs> and there goes DeAndre Swift. 75 yards in just three plays. And the freshman has given the dogs a three touchdown lead for the SEC championship. DeAndre Swift, the freshman out of Philadelphia, has just put Georgia in the driver's seat with 10 and a half to go here in Atlanta. He'll be one of the featured backs next year, won't he? Yep. Blankenship has got it teed up in front of a record crowd, 76,534. If you're a Georgia fan, it's going to be about 120,000 that say they were here if this lead holds up. He's, the, he's juiced. He is. <laughs> <laughs> that one almost made the crowd. And that one high incomplete. Jared Stidham is one of his last 10 passes since he was hit on third down in the back of his head by Aaron Davis just before the blocked field goal. Since then, Jared Davis is one for his last 10 passes for nine yards. 
They need all they can muster from him right now, trailing by 21. Stidham, kind of a quick play fake, and the ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Could have been Bellamy, I'm not quite sure. But it brings up third down and 10. Yeah, pick, pick whoever you want. Could have been Tyler Clark, could have been Bellamy. All oh, that front four is looking like the Auburn front four from the first game. I'll tell you, the defensive lines in this conference, when they get rolling, it's a different brand of football. Third down and 10. Here comes that blitz from Roquan Smith up the middle again. Stidham has time. And incomplete intended for Davis. And it's broken up by Tyreek McGee. Fourth down. They have no choice but to punt. That's too deep in their own territory. Not one deep ball for Auburn in this football game. The offensive line with all those seniors that have basically manhandled the SEC the second half of the season have not been able to do it today. Terry Godwin will trot out on the field awaiting the kick from Aiden Marshall. Calls for the fair catch immediately. Just wants to make the clean catch and not try anything fancy. And Georgia takes over at the 28 yard line. So Georgia with the football back at the 41. They're going to give it to Brian Harrion on an end around. And Harrion getting in the act. First down. Pickup of 12. That bevy of backs they have. Harrion, one of them, along with Swift. Chubb, Michelle, Holyfield, all those guys. And I remember after the game when Gus Malzahn said that, and I all week said it was the most best coaching move of Kirby Smart's career at Georgia so far when he just did not overreact, didn't get mad at Gus. He just looked at his team and said, yeah, they did. And we have to look forward, not backward. And he got his team ready to play this football game. Swift. And around, gives some ground to try to gain some. Throws a stiff arm out there and maybe got two yards as we check in with Allie. Guys, fast forward to a week ago, and this whole Georgia team was together on their bus after the Georgia Tech game watching the end of the Iron Bowl. And they told me they were so fired up when they saw that Auburn won because they had such a salty taste in their mouth. And that is when the preparation began. These guys have known from day one we have to get revenge on Auburn. So Coach Smart actually put together a freebie tape. It was all the plays that they gave away against Auburn. He said, don't get me wrong. Auburn earned a lot of their success, but we also shot ourselves in the foot. If we can clean up those freebies, we'll be good to go today. And so far, just one turnover. I know they had some of the penalties, but they were those aggressive penalties, so he was okay with it. And you've just got DeAndre Swift, who might end up with more rushing yards than Sony Michelle or Nick Chubb, going for another first down. DeAndre's got 83 yards on six carries, including a 64-yard touchdown. Well, that was a first. Uh, that was a fast injury recovery. I had him going six weeks. <laughs> I'm glad you're not my yeah, doctor. Yeah, I had him icing it, you know, and maybe going to get an X-ray and MRI. <laughs> One play. Yes. Here he is again, this time wrapped up for a loss. Well, I feel bad about throwing that out to you, but let me uh, say this. I don't think the committee should take this game into effect at all. I think game one to the last game, Alabama has been the most consistent team. I think you can make the argument that top to bottom, they had not had any bad games. They're one of the four best teams. That's, I, that's the way I look at well, it. Well, you and I saw it. We saw the domination of Georgia and Alabama. Alabama was number one until the college right, football right. rankings came out. Then Georgia took it. And then both of them had to go to Jordan-Hare Stadium, which is not Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Exactly. And so we're going to have to wait. I actually think Auburn in those two games could have beat anyone in the country. I do, in those too. Two games. Here's a tough sweep to Brian Harrion. Wanting to stay in bounds. I think he forgot that part. I still say this, it'll still be a tough decision, leaving no Big Ten put team in the championship and taking two from the SEC. But listen, the committee set the precedent last year when they just basically said Ohio State was better than Penn State. They have to live with that decision and precedent they set last year. That's all I'm saying. Here's a give to Holyfield again. 
And he spins his way inside the 20, down around the 18 yard line. Well, let's take a look at our GMC game changer. The defense of Georgia has been spectacular today. Jared Stidham, that strip sack by Bellamy, took away a field goal. Then Georgia blocked a 31 yard field goal. And then carry on Johnson coughed up the football Roquan Smith picked it up that led to a Georgia touchdown and thus we have the score we have Georgia gave up a lot of yards three weeks ago and only half of that today season high against this veteran member dominating front four defense most of the eyeball experts were saying that Auburn's defense was too good. Yep. You know, that, that's the trouble with that eyeball test, I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't really know what to do sometimes. I will say this, thinking out loud, watching Jake Fromm finish off this drive here and Georgia win this SEC championship. And Fromm's going to throw in and out of the hands of Wims. He hasn't had a catch, and I think because he blocked so well, they were given some sugar to yeah. the receiver, right? I think so. What really stands out to me in this game is we see that last pass trying to get Wims a little stat line instead of just blocks. Is back-to-back years now, we have true freshman quarterbacks winning the SEC championship. Jalen Hurts and now Jake Fromm. Even though Georgia didn't score, Gary, on that last drive, remember they took it over with 824 left, and there was a penalty on the punt that gave them the automatic first down, so they chewed six minutes basically off the clock. Didn't need any more points, actually. <laughs> 2008 was the last team from the SEC East to win the championship. It was the Florida Gators. And as Gary said earlier, last time Georgia was able to do it was 2005. But think about it. Georgia's going to get in the college football playoff, and the last time they had a chance to get into something to win a national championship, they lost the Sugar Bowl to Penn State when they were number one. Yeah. And you know, in 2000, you know what the key is? In 2005, Kirby was the running back coach at Georgia. Well, he's back as the big man now. Here's a throwback screen out to Slayton. Oh, it's collared over there by Baker. And remember how the game started. Georgia challenged those quick screens to the outside without a healthy carry on Johnson and no quick screens to the outside. This offense was neutralized. 142 remaining. As Stidham throws short complete. And Miller's got a first down because he's run out of bounds with a minute and a half to go. Well, how about two quarterbacks, though? One that was playing scout team for a high school just to keep his arm warmed up a year ago, and the other one was playing high school, high school ball, ball. <laughs> here in, in Georgia. Very good. And uh, both of them meet in a championship game in their first time in a setting this big. You know, when we, we started off the program, with the questions about carry on Johnson and you know we said uh, he's going to try it he'll play unless his arm falls off he'll stay out there yep. and that's been the case but obviously and, and I don't want to take anything away from Georgia's defense obviously they played a great game but you know let's tip your hat to Auburn they've had a great second half of the year mainly behind that guy who you said and you know he might be, be proven right right now <laughs> the most valuable player in the in the SEC that's what I think even if he hadn't played today that's what I thought he meant to this team well, and these stats today you know by this team without him basically or a half of carry on Johnson might even more prove that statement to be correct. Stidham pressured from behind throws incomplete. So now who will Georgia match up in that playoff matchup. Remember that defense will show up. They'll be able to run the ball. I don't think Jake Fromm is going to get stage fright. No nope, not anymore. I don't, I don't think so. Not that he ever had it but he certainly won't have it now with those numbers in the day that he has had. You know you're going to get healthy in this time frame. You're going to have Chubb and Michelle as healthy as they were maybe all, all year for that game. It's a solidly built team. It'll take a special team to beat them. Sony Michelle will have to wait and see about his injury. Whether that'll he's got a month to heal. Jared Stidham going down at the 30 yard line. DeAndre Walker with the exclamation point on the Auburn quarterback. 
Georgia's a minute away from their 12th win of the season. It's only the third time in their history that would happen. One of Mark Rick's teams that won a Sugar Bowl went 12 and 1. Vince Dooley's undefeated national champions with Herschel Walker won 12 and lost none. And now Georgia's going to be 12 and 1 with the playoff looming. Third down and give me some help for Jared Stidham. And it's fourth down. Jonathan Ledbretter bringing the heat that time. Just kind of running through the top teams. If Clemson wins tonight, the next time we see Georgia, they'll be playing Oklahoma. Oklahoma will be number two. Georgia will be number three. Either Wisconsin, Ohio State, or Alabama will be in that fourth spot. That's it. We're down to just those teams. Miami obviously is in it still, but if Wisconsin wins, you pretty much got the matchups. What a difference 21 days makes if you're a Georgia fan. Stidham, last chance, and it's incomplete. Yeah, that kind of summed it up right there, didn't yep, it? Yeah, it did. The headset can come off. The SEC championship visors can go on pretty soon if they have some made up. And he's still working the sideline. Uh, I think he was working information he got that was wrong. That looked like somebody in the inform sports information department was telling him something that, you know, maybe somebody's a yard away from a record or something. And he said, why are you telling me that now? Well, he just got a bath. Kirby Smart in his second year has taken Georgia to the SEC championship. And they do it basically on their home turf here in Georgia. There you go. There's the headline tomorrow. Yeah. And as I said, this SEC conference is tough on coaches, especially when a guy like Kirby Smart walks in and takes the championship in year two. Everybody else goes, uh, why can't you do that? A freshman quarterback, a great running attack, a tough defense, and the biggest win for Georgia in decades. And now what will the future hold for that guy? Will we see Gus Malzahn continuing to coach Auburn, Auburn or will he be at Arkansas? We know one thing, Kirby Smart's not going anywhere. And his resilient Georgia Bulldogs a unanimous winner today. Allie's with the winning coach. Coach, congratulations on the first SEC championship for Georgia since 2005. What was the difference this time? From it was three real weeks simple. Ago? Composure and physicality. That's all it was about. Composure and physicality and great kids like this. 31 seniors on this roster with Nick Chubb being one of them. They trusted you. He came back for his senior year. What can you say about what they've meant to this program? Oh, it meant everything to this program. The leadership that he and Sony Michelle and the rest of these seniors have provided for us, it's impeccable. And this is an awesome win for our program, for our university, and a lot of people around the state of Georgia. Thank you, Coach. Congrats, Nick. You, you glad you came back? Thank you. I'm so glad I came back. I bet you are, guys. <laughs> Man, a few words, but a lot of yards. <laughs> a lot of yards. Second only to Herschel. Nick Chubb and the Georgia Bulldogs are the Southeastern Conference champions for 2017. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs, the Southeastern Conference champs. They're going to the playoffs, and there will be a party in this state tonight. 76,534 saw it. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary Danvis and Allie LaForce, Brad Nessler saying so long from Atlanta. Dogs win 28-7. College football postgame show powered by Ram is up next right after these messages.